Guys, I think there's a boat down there. This is my father's. Did you tell your father that you wanted to be Peter Pan oh, when yeah. you grew up? Oh, is yeah. that how this all started? You know, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing the deeps of it, but, right. but it's like how this thing really started really? Oh, is God. you wanted to be Peter Pan yeah. so as, as an adult. The love of acting, <laughs> the, the love of it, for, I would say, for me, was, um, I used to, of course, I used to watch all the bonus features and everything right. I could on the DVDs I would get as a kid. But I did, when I was young, like, cut up clothes to make costumes and, like... Oh yeah, I've seen uh, pictures of you and Nick. Yeah, especially my cousin Nick. We used to we used to do all sorts of stuff, especially when Star Wars was out. Oh, it was fantastic. But yeah, I, was, I remember like my dad kind of came to me and was like, "You gotta stop cutting up your clothes, you know? <laughs> like those aren't real. Those people are actors." And I'm like, "Well, I guess I want to be an actor." And you know, he believed in me. Yeah. We auditioned in Austin and we lived in Conroe, which is a three-hour drive there. Right. So it'd be like three hours there audition three hours back, which now I couldn't even imagine, you know? You guys used to do that quite often, like sometimes two or three times in, through the week. Pulling me out of school, go, yeah, if, if necessary, do. you know? Yeah. That's that's how seriously we had to take it. It was um, either you take it seriously or you, or you don't. Or you don't. You no, know? and that's what separates it. I mean, it was, it was, it was still difficult, and you question, like, oh, am I doing the right thing, you know? And how many people are affected behind my dream, you know? It's, <laughs> so you have to take that into consideration also. And I, I had a support system, you know, with my wife. And she was there, she supported, and, and she believed the same thing I believe, this could happen. And people say, oh, how did you get started? I'm like, I'm telling like, remember when I was doing this and I was with you? <laughs> I was starting back then. That's where, yeah, that's where, that's where it starts. I think it's important that people know, like you don't just show up, you know, one day in the middle of your dream, but there are just some amazing sacrifices uh, that are required of you if you really want to get there. Really, the big investment move, the first one, was you and your dad right. left home. At 14, mm -hmm. uh, 13, actually. We, um, we drove to California. In a, in a rental car, and then when we got there, we didn't have a car, so we had to go buy one cash. Just an old, we, we had to buy an old cash Lexus. With We stayed with a roommate, um, just to kind of figure it out. You know, at 14, without any credits, really, you know, with my manager in Texas, you know, just trying to find people in Los Angeles who would just take a chance. You found a lot of favor while you were there. We did, we found, like, God blessed us for sure. But it wasn't easy. We talked to a lot of management teams, and we luckily, we we met with my manager now, Jesse Green at Monster Talent, who she just, I guess she saw it, you know, whatever it was, and, you know, God blessed me, and she was willing to sign me and work with me. So you guys stayed out there for like how many, how long? About a, about a year. About a year? And then, I, and then you guys I got, came back. I got booked in a nice indie film called um, Edge of the World, which shot in Amarillo. Your uncle absolutely loved that. Oh yeah, it was, so, it's a, it was an amazing time to shoot. Great, great, I met a lot of friends and great castmates. And, and so it started building from there. Actually, I finished, I moved back, I finished high school and at 17, I went back to California. How was that, coming here you're in high school because, like, what, you're in the 10th, 11th grade? I was, I, when I went back to high school, I, I started my, again in my freshman year. Uh, you stayed in school and then you left again your junior year. How was that? You, like, I mean, like, now you're getting ready. You're a kid. Right. And so you're getting ready. Yes, you're going for your dream. But again, when we were talking about sacrifices. That was another big sacrifice. I mean, you're just a regular kid. Like you're acting, but you're that kid. You're playing football, you're running track, you have friends, you're, you're doing all those things. And so when you left, you're not going to do any of the norms. So we're not gonna go to prom, you know, no homecoming, you know, any, none of those things that you normally transition uh, through in high school. And so how was that? I mean, I'm not gonna lie, it was tough, you know, like I, I sometimes, some days I regret not going to prom not doing that. I think what we were trying to do, um, our family kind of saw beyond that. Beyond. We, we realized that the sacrifice would have to be very high if we were, if we wanted to end up where we wanted to end up. Right. And they just, you just believe in yourself and believe in what you're doing. Um, one thing I always say is have discipline and consistency and you'll get there. And you'll get there. You'll get there. You know, there's been times like when Jonathan did Revolution, I'm like, right. okay, he can. And I, I put him on there, and then Joe was like, 
And your husband said, you know, you can do anything you want to do. You told me it's going to be on TV. I flip on Revolution. There's Jonathan. And so <laughs> that's when it got real to me, like, oh, wait. He yeah. can he yeah. can do this. Let's, yeah. let's, let's try to do this. You talk about sacrifices, not only just you, uh, but your parents, too. I remember when your father was here working and and you guys were out there. And so that lasted like what about a year? It was about a year. He was uh, he was away from us and it was and it was very very difficult, you know. Like you like I I kind of just had to become the man of the house and my father couldn't see his wife and his kids. You know, I know that right. hurt him. He was um I know it was hard for you cuz you guys are like best buds. Yeah, and I, of course <laughs> I, I, me and my dad are like this. Yeah, you know, right? we tell each other everything, so it's kind of hard. You know, he's constantly calling to kind of see how things are, but there's a 3-hour time difference. Right. So uh <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm was, awake. He sleep. <laughs> when you guys were asleep, he was calling. Yeah, he was calling, he and, and then he's call, he's sleeping. I'm calling. And right. It was really, it was really tough moving to Los Angeles by myself. I had knew no one, but the sacrifice did start here, because we always try to put our children in a position to be able to see where they could be or where right. they can be, right. and um, sometimes that meant really sacrificing financially mm -hmm. to be in a better place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to put you in a position where you don't have naysayers sometimes, right? right? right, right. Um, and you can be around people who- Are like mine. Are like-minded. Yeah. There were a lot of financial sacrifices in that, to be around those visions of greatness right. so that you can right. see that, you know, I may not have superficial things, right? Right, right. Um, but what's most important is that I do have my faith and I have my family. Yeah. I can see myself right. at this end place. Right. right. And so I think that's that sacrifice wasn't just for my children though. No, no. That sacrifice no, was no. for other children too. Yeah, it was um we just kinda felt like God would not have brought us this far to fail. You know? He's he's done so much to kind of just bless us and get us through and, and days and there were plenty of times and days when we were like you know, like, yeah, this was, might not be it. I knew like, I, well, I don't know how we're going to be in this house tomorrow. Your dad was so, he said, yeah, I would look at it and I would think, you know, well, we're going back and we're going to go stay with Gina for a bit. And uh, and then we'll just come back. It was never, ever, a, we're not going to do it. It's like, if we need that time, we're just going to go back and regroup and then come back again. Because he so believed in you and he believed in your gift.